scripture comes from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. And these happen to be some of the most, um, I guess you could say, filling verses. When I read these, I feel, I just really feel the, the Holy Spirit. And so I encourage you, open your hearts as we hear the Word of God. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be made complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Your gracious and almighty God, I praise you for today. I praise you for the fact that you are here in our darkest hour. And you are here in our greatest joys. You are here in our ups and downs and you never let go. Why, Father? Because you chose us. And we don't let go of our choices. Lord God, oh Christ, my Savior, lead us today. Teach us how to live a life where we can see you even in the darkness. Help us remain in you. Lord God, may it be your words that are heard today and not mine. May it be your way that we follow and not just ours. In your name we pray. Amen. When I was a kid, I used to love to go on hikes with my family. As an adult, I still love to go on hikes. And one of my favorite parts about going on a hike, particularly in Colorado, Summit County to be exact, was when we hiked around Lake Dillon. Now, Lake Dillon is this big, beautiful, fantastic lake, and the best part about hiking around and getting up to the lake was that when you got there, there were rocks on the sides you could throw into the water. As a kid, and I'm sure all of you are thinking about that, and you know your kids love to do that. We used to love to pick up rocks. And no matter how calm and quiet the lake was, you had to throw the rock and see who could make the biggest splash. Or you had to try and skip the rock and see if you could get it across there. One of the things that we loved to do was see who could make the most ripples. You throw the rock in the water, and, and how many could you get? And we tried big rocks and little rocks, and we tried throwing them up high and see how they went. It was so much fun, and when we did that, it just felt serene, good, exciting. We knew that we were having fun and that, that we had managed to make big splashes. As a five-year-old, that's a pretty significant thing. For us as adults, though, we probably don't think as much excitement in making ripples in the water. But we do think about how we work really hard to give all that we can, to do good, to to try and, and be the men and women that the Lord has asked us to be. We try hard to, to make our way through life and, and experience good things. But as we have talked about the last few weeks, we have realized that sometimes life is hard. We hurt. Things go wrong. We feel lonely. And we ask ourselves, where are you, God, in the midst of this? And when we ask that question, God responds to us by answering, saying, the question is not, where am I? I'm right here. Where are you? Come be with me. Come play with me. Come let me hold you in the middle of your pain, because I'm sitting right there in the middle of your hurt, or in the middle of everything going wrong. I am with you, trying to help hold you together. I am your peace. I am your friendship. I am the one that is walking with you. And so God knows that in the highs and in the lows, He will never let go of us. Now one of the things that, that 
We learn as kids, as I just told you, that in order to make the biggest ripples in life, or excuse me, in the, in the lake, you have to throw the rock really high. Uh, I got it. <laughs> and it will splash way far down, and it will make tons of ripples. If you can see this right now, it's rippling all. I'm so sorry. It's clean water. <laughs> I should have, if Gallagher is performing today, I should have given plastic to the front row. (laughs) Back to the image. (laughs) You have to throw the rock really high in order for it to go really low and splash down and make the biggest splash and the most amount of ripples. But if you don't throw it really high, if you just gently drop it in, (laughs) duck, it doesn't do much. That's where she wants to do it. Well, see, in our life, if we don't allow for the highs and the lows, we'll never be able to have the joy of the most impact, the biggest amount of ripples. You see, what the Holy Spirit does when we are going through these hard times, when we're asking God, where are you and how can I engage with you? How can I connect? God says, well, I am there in the highs and the lows. And when we go to the low lows, when we go all the way down through to the bottom and we feel like we've hit rock bottom, Christ says, I am there and I will help you heal and grow. And all of us know, those of us who have been through hard times, that we feel like we can make a greater impact in our world after that because we understand more about the difficulties of the world. We understand more about the hurt and the brokenness. And we understand how that person who we see hurting just like us, we understand what they're going through. And we know how to care. I believe that God teaches us that unless we allow for the hard times to displace the things that we're comfortable with, we won't know full peace. We won't know His wholeness. We won't know how to celebrate the highs. As we've talked about, pain is a warning sign. Brokenness is a sign to say, I've got something to learn. I've got something to make my way through. I've got something that I need to struggle with. I've got a cause I must fight for. Say you have somebody in your family who who is struggling with cancer. And you happen to be somebody who is planning to become a doctor. Maybe your cause now is to be the one who finds the cure for cancer. Or perhaps you're somebody who, for me, I went through a time where I had a very unhealthy church that I experienced. And I was so broken and emotionally and spiritually hurting. And I said, there are other people out there who are struggling with the same pain. And I long to do everything I can to make churches healthy because I saw the pain and brokenness of an unhealthy church. You see, what happens is God takes us when we are on the highs and we drop to the lows and He takes those lows so that we can learn and we can make an impact. You see, those ripples that we would make, it was so exciting to see. Look, I made 20. Like you can really count ripples, but you know, you can pretend. As kids, we'd be like, I made more ripples than you. And we could say that and celebrate. For all of us, when we've gone through hard times in our lives and we work to help and care for others out of it, we then begin to make an impact on others. In a sense, the presence of the Holy begins to ripple out from us. From that point of impact. God begins to be seen in us and people begin to say, Where is God when I hurt? Well, they're in my friend. He's in my friend who showed up to comfort me in the middle of it. Where is God when everything goes wrong? Well, he was in my church, never letting go of me. Where is God when I feel lonely? He's right there in the midst of my loneliness and my aloneness, comforting me. And so when we come to realize that, when we realize that He has taken us and when we drop to the bottom, allows that to make the biggest impact, then we can begin to make a difference in this world. We can begin to see that our brokenness, our hard times, our struggles are going to be redeemed for good. Now note, I didn't say we're meant for good because God does not tell us, I'm going to cause pain so that you can learn from it. 
That's not the character of God. God does not cause pain. God redeems pain. He takes the hard times and says, I will work it to my good. I wished it didn't happen, but I'll work it to my good. We all know those kind of experiences. And as Jamie reiterated today in the children's sermon, and I'm going to reiterate today in the sermon, you want to know what? Jamie and I didn't, like, talk about that. It just happened. Ooh, I like her. She says in the first children's sermon of this series that if we seek God before the pain, then we'll be able to see Him in the midst of it. If we seek God in the hard times, no matter what, we'll know where He is. And so I want us to take away one thing today from the whole series. That when we go through the hard times, if we remain in Him, we will be okay. If we remain in Him, we'll make it through. Now, I want to quickly elaborate that from this passage. Jenny, if you go ahead and put up the first scripture slide. If you notice, in this passage, John 15, this is written by the disciple John. And John uses the word remain the most in scripture. He uses it in this book 30 times. And he uses it in in another book that he writes later, 1 John, 18 times. I'm sorry, he uses it 33 here. For him, it was very important that we grab the concept of remaining, of sticking with God when things were rough. And so what Christ tells his disciples is that they are to remain in his love. Now let me tell you the context of this. Chapter 15 actually isn't the beginning of this whole conversation that's going on. The whole conversation begins in John chapter 13. And John chapter 13 is where Christ And the disciples are in the upper room, getting ready to have that Passover meal. And Christ starts off the Passover meal with a foot washing. And he gets on his knees, and he picks up the feet of his disciples, and he says, let me wash your feet. And they say, no, 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 don't do that, Christ. You're not supposed to do that. Somebody else is. And he says, if I don't show you this is how I love you, that I'm willing to give all that I have, you won't know what it's like. He then goes on to say, this is the example of love. He says, you guys are about to go through one of the hardest times you've had yet. You see, they came off of this great big high. I mean, earlier that week, they had just all walked into Jerusalem and it was this big, huge party. Everybody was like, yay, Jesus is here and his disciples. And they're like, woohoo, look at us. It's like the Super Bowl, Mardi Gras. They're having fun. It was great. And they go, and what what does Christ tell them in the midst of all this? Guess what? One of you is going to betray me, and then I'm going to die on the cross and be resurrected. And they're kind of like, that doesn't make sense. (laughs) They just threw a big party for you. And so he begins by telling them, things are going to go wrong. So this is how you're going to handle it. Stick with me. Remain in my love. Here's how I love you, and that's sacrificing myself, and you're to do this for one another. You're to love and care for one another. Now, when the hard times come, remain in my love. He doesn't say this in, remain in my love when it's easy. He has talked to them about the bad things, and he says, remain in my love. I'm going to use the electronics today. I looked up this word remain um, based on the kind of the biblical definition of it and, and the, the dictionary definition. And this is what those definitions combined with the word remain means in this context. Continue to exist, especially after other similar or related people or things have ceased to exist. Stay in the place that one has been occupying. Continue to possess a particular quality or fulfill a particular role. Be left over after others or other parts have been completed, used, or dealt with. You see, for Christ, he was saying, stick with me when everybody else doesn't. Stick with me when there's no reason for you to. Stick with me when this whole thing is done. And you will see that God has greater rewards. Remain in me. And we'll make it through. We'll see God when we don't know where he is. Jenny, if you go ahead to the next one. He says, greater love is no one than this than he who lays down his life for his friends. 
So now I'm about to give everything. I'm going to show you what this love is. Remain in me because I am going to love you and give the ultimate sacrifice. So live this kind of love. And then he says, you are my friends. If you do what I command, you are my friends. Now this is important to take note. Because it goes along with what I underlined in verse 16. We don't have friends forced upon us. We choose our friends. The people that we become good friends with, that we call friend, we've chosen to call them that. And I think all too often we forget that Christ chose us. He says it clearly. You did not choose me. I chose you. And so because I chose you, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to bail out on you. I'm not going to think it was a bad choice. You're my friends, and I'll stick with you. That shifts our way of thinking. When we go through the hard times, Christ isn't bailing on us. He's right there because he chose us, and he's going to stick with us and walk with us through those hard times. For us in our lives, we all know different people who have come along and who have made an impact on us. Who have come along and shown us that Christ chose us. Who have been Christ for us. Who have been that example. Who have said, I'll show you where God is when you hurt. I'll show you where God is when you feel alone. I'll show you where God is. I had the honor this week of telling a conference full of people that that person, that man who did that the most for me was my dad. Because of him, I am the woman I am today. But because of more than just him. If I was to look at the pool of my life, I would tell you there are hundreds of different men and women who had taken their hard times and used them to help me see God who had taken their hard times and helped me heal and grow and become the woman I am today. And so today, when you come up for communion, I encourage you to take a rock. And before you get up here, think about who are those people who made that impact on you? Whose ripples of their hard times and their way of healing, and the fact that they lived this remaining in Christ and choosing Him and knowing that He chose them. Think about who made that impact on you. And then take that rock and drop it in the water and watch the ripples and think about who you need to make an impact on. Who in your life do you need to let God's love radiate out from you so that they can know That God is here in the hard times. If we remain in Him, if we hold fast to Him in the good and the bad, and we remember that the Holy chose us, we will see that the impact of our lives go beyond anything we could have ever imagined. For Christ, He took that night after he had talked to his disciples about love and about sticking together and remembering that Christ loved them and that God would always be with them and that he chose them, he said, now I am going to sacrifice myself and my body is going to break. (laughs) Sorry. His hands were both pierced and his feet. And his body broke to show how much he loved. And then he took the juice and he said, Look, you need to know that I will show you my love by laying down my life and spilling my blood and rising again so that you can see the impact of all that we have for Christ when he sacrificed himself and then was buried for three days and rose again what happened was he he took 
the stone of brokenness. He took the stone. As we talk about the tomb, the stone was rolled away from the front of the tomb. And he took that and splashed it into eternity and said, I will always and forever love you and give you strength and hold you fast. And I will always be there. So as you come forth to take communion today, drop your rock and think about who you need to impact. And take the communion and commit yourself to following in his footsteps and remaining with him always. Let's prepare our hearts for communion.